Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman. I am your GPR professor from LearnGPR.com and today I'm going to answer a question I got from one of our uh, uh, YouTube subscribers. They wanted to know what a DC shift is. And what a DC shift is, is what we call a one-dimensional filter. Right? So GPR produces data in one dimensions, two dimensions, and three dimensions. And uh, in the software package that this individual was using, they had a feature called the DC shift. And so what we're going to do is go over uh, one-dimensional filters, and we're going to include the DC shift and the DWOW. Okay, the DWOW, one of the maybe the greatest name of any uh, 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 signal filter of all time. The DWOW, um, because they're basically they're related. They're related to each other. So two things happen to your one-dimensional GPR data um, that are that that are problems. Two problems occur with your one-dimensional data. So to have a good two-dimensional profile to look at to interpret, um, you need to correct for these two issues. Okay. So the first one. We're going to talk about is DC shift. Then we're going to talk about DWOW. And here's, I think, a good way to think about it. So let's say that you have uh, your signal, and right, this is your, you know, your positive. This is your negative, and so your zero would be here, right? That's your zero line. That's no signal, right? That's 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 not a positive or negative signal. And you have a trace, which is what we call it. Okay, or, or your scan. Um, what a what a what a, uh, a a good trace would look like would be something like this, right? Where your zero is really your mean or your average, and your response is you know probably look more something like this, okay? would be around that mean. And so you'd have your positive responses and you'd have your negative responses and your average would be zero, right? Zero and zero. Unfortunately, this is usually not what the GPR professional gets when they're acquiring GPR data. So two problems occur that have to be corrected. Now, luckily, many GPR systems will correct for these automatically, but if in your software package you want to go all the way back to the raw data and then do these yourself, you can do them. So if this is what you want to happen, then what actually occurs? Well, you get two issues occurring, as I said. Here's your zero. When your GPR, think about this. This is a ground surface. Okay, you have a GPR on your ground surface. Let's say this is your transmitter and this is your receiver, and they may both be in the same box, but you put out a signal and you're trying to locate a target right here, right? That's what you want to happen. What actually happens is the first thing it gets is signal from the transmitter to the receiver, okay? It gets uh, uh, an airwave. It also gets from the ground to the receiver and uh, as a reflection, then it also gets a refraction into the ground and back to the receiver. You get a lot of inundation of this receiver right here. So what happens is you get a shift in your mean because it overloads your receiver. The transmitter overloads the receiver with signal um, right at the very beginning. So what's the what's the 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 you know the result of all this inundation? Well, rather than running along your zero, what happens is your trace looks something more along these lines, right? So here's the original one, let's say that you know that I showed you, right? Something along along like this. Instead, what happens? Right, so this is normal, right? So green is normal. Instead, what happens is this: it shifts everything, and now instead of it being on zero, your mean is somewhere. In the positive or the negative. So in, in reality, you're getting something like this as your signal. What's the problem here? 
The problem is you have no mean, right? You have no zero. Everything is positive. And so this all comes up, the entire trace comes up as positive, and you cannot look at information when all of the data is in the positive shift. So you need to push this down, uh, uh, you know, to your zero. So that is what the DC shift does, is it takes this, right? So this is, uh, um, you know, direct current, okay, shift, shifted. It takes this and it moves it down to here, okay? So this is what's collected. And then this is what's filtered. Filtered with DC shift. Okay, that's how that works. It moves from this to this. That's one problem solved. However, there is a second problem for your one-dimensional trace. And here's how that goes. Your mean usually doesn't stay as your mean. You have a what's called a low frequency uh, um, wow of your data, which is basically drift from the mean as your as your trace is being collected. So instead of like this, what it collects is this. So now you have a DC shifted and wowed trace. So you need to uh, uh, adjust the DC shift and adjust for the wow, and so you need to de-wow it. And so in order to do that, what happens is this has to come down this way, as well as this part has to be bent down so your average actually becomes zero. So you want to go from this is what's really collected, this red right here, where you have it's shifted off from the inundation, and then you have a, uh, a drift from the mean, which wows the data, and you need to correct for this by adjusting it back to your zero point. That's how you filter a one-dimensional trace. Okay, You take the shifted, the DC inundated, and wowed signal, and you shift it down this way, and then you adjust for this drift by moving it all back to zero. Again, this usually happens behind the scenes on most GPR, um, sometimes it does a good job and sometimes it doesn't do a good job. If you want to address this on your own, then you'll have to go into some post-processing software, go back to the raw data, and then adjust for the DC shift, and then you can de uh, uh your data in order to create a trace like this. So this one now would be filtered with DC shift and de -wow. So I hope this makes sense to you. If you have any questions, then put in the comments below. If you've ever used one of these two filters, put in the comments below when you used it and if you found that it was helpful. Um, and if you have not done so, subscribe to the channel. All right, uh, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to grow the community here and head over to, to learngpr.com and put your name and email address in and we will send you these videos right to your inbox every single week. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next video.